If you're a doctor, you're a dentist, I can probably attest two things. Number one, you make a good income compared to the most of the people in the, in the country in America. And number two, you pay a buttload of taxes. I know when I got out of dental school, really the only th they really only talked about two things. You know, you're gonna make a lot of money, active income, and number two, you know, the more money you make, the more you're gonna pay in taxes. There was there was nothing about different types of income, like some of the income that's non-taxable, some of the some of the different income that's not tax as much, different ways we could mitigate taxes or anything like that. In this video, I want to talk to you about that because I'm, as you can see, I'm at one of the RV parks that I own here in my hometown in Louisiana. And what I want to talk about, you know, when I got out of dental school, you know, I, I didn't know anything about this. And it took me from hurting my wrist on a snow skiing accident. My kids, they were probably like 10 and 8. And I realized, you know, more for a disability policy, uh, like an insurance policy on top of my disability policy, that I wanted to, well, I needed to do something in order to mitigate risk. And that involved doing something, getting extra streams of income coming in. So if I couldn't practice with it, guess what? Dad could still provide for the family. So studying wealthy people, I realized that they don't say, I am, I am a dentist, I'm a doctor. They say, I own, I own real estate, I own businesses. I own this, I own that. And a couple of things about that. Number one, like us, we're, they're not having to trade time for money to make money. Whereas you take, take your vacation. If you want to go take, you know, a month or two off and you're a solo practitioner, like, like I am, and like a lot of people are, or you own your own business, it's not that you can't afford the vacation. It's you can't afford to be on vacation that long because what you have to still pay the overhead. You have to still pay the employees. You got taxes coming in. You have supplies. You have all that kind of stuff. So they don't talk to you about that. And the the, the wealthy people, they realize that the number one hottest tax income is the one that we're focused on all the time. And that is, that is your active income. And that's what most people are. They're either employees or they're self-employed. And once you go to the point where your income is coming from other sources of income, like this, like real estate, you know, dividends from stocks, mutual funds from other sources that aren't, that aren't causing you to trade time for money. Guess what? Well, time's the most important thing. So not only are you not having to pay the taxes, but more importantly, the time. So let me give you an example. So this RV park, that's a source of income that, you know, depending on how active you want to be, you could be in a syndication, which is what this one is. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that's basically a group investment that you can invest in as a limited partner with other general part with a general partner that basically runs all of this. And you can still do what you do. You can still treat patients or run your business or whatever. And that way you're able to get a piece of the revenue of this. Plus, whenever it sells, you get a piece of that on the back end. The income coming from that, guess what? It doesn't take you to make the income. So if you're on vacation, this income is still coming in. You're not having to trade time for money. You're not having to, you're not having to trade time treating patients. But if that's the only way, only thing that you're looking at, you're missing the boat because the cool thing is we can use depreciation from real estate, from these syndications. So for instance, you know, if, if we wanted to put another, if we want to put another pad down or something like that, that's called land improvement. Land improvement, you're allowed to depreciate or basically write off the wear and tear or improvements that you're making to the property faster than just your typical standard depreciation, which is like 27 and a half years or 39 years for, for commercial. So you can take the depreciation and guess what? That's called a passive loss and the passive loss can not offset passive income. Now it doesn't have anything to do with your active income, but that source of income could, could potentially be tax free versus the income that you're making now. Not only are you trading time for money, but you're also getting taxed Probably once you factor in state tax and everything else, you're probably getting tax 40, depending on which state you live in, like California or something like that, close to 50%. The wealthy people, the majority, and, and you've probably heard about, you know, Warren Buffett's secretary's tax rate is higher than his. And I was like, oh yeah, whatever, that's BS. But now that I understand what's going on, it's true because the majority of his income, guess what folks? It's not active income. It's, it's, passive income. It's, it's income from sources where 
he doesn't have to trade his time for money, but it's also income to where it's like the lowest tax income versus most doctors, dentists, high income earners, professionals, where's most of their income coming from? It's coming from active income. You're trading time for money. And I'm telling you, if you just focus on that, if you just focus, you know, on, if, if you don't do that, that's then, then you're going to have to go the, trip, the typical route, 401k, work for 40 years, and then you will have enough probably or hopefully to retire, depending on what the stock market's doing. But if you focus on acquiring different strains of passive income throughout your career, you don't have to do a ton. Just do a little bit each year. Just, you know, most of these syndications, the minimum investment's $50,000. Well, what I've noticed is the majority of physicians and dentists and people like that, they typically just invest the minimum. Typically, the minimum is $50,000. But the people that invest with us that understand how important this is, they're the ones that invest four or five hundred thousand, sometimes seven figures, because they want the majority of their income coming in little to no tax that, that they're not trading time for money. So if I could go back, I'll leave you with this. If I could go back to when I started my practice roughly about 20 years ago from day one, and I, I'm not saying don't invest in your 401k and all of that, because you do get tax benefits with putting money in, you know, that, that goes in as tax deductible. Plus that's just, it's, you're diversified. I, I still do that with my practice, but what I'm saying is any extra money, instead of dumping it back in the top into the stock market like I used to do with index funds, I would have taken all of that and started putting it in to things like this. Appreciating cash flowing businesses and properties that I can build passive income streams and get tax breaks, tax deduction. And then you get to the point where guess what? Work is optional. When work is optional, that's when things are fun because you can start giving away your work. You're really enjoying your work. You're not so focused on having, you got to go to work. You, you have to pay the bills. You've got all these different income streams coming in. But you know what? It doesn't happen overnight. Make it a point, just like your financial advisors have hooked you in to, and, and they're smart. They're like, hey, we're going to deduct because you're not smart enough to do it. The IRS is smart too, because if you're an employee, what do they do? Employers, they take their money before they give you the check. Why? They want to get their money first. So think about it like that. Open up some sort of money market account or something like that. Automate it every single week or every single month or quarter, or whatever. Automate it to where money is coming out of your business account into that. And if you want to automate it, that's the best thing to do. Then when that account grows, guess what? You turn around and you freaking deplete it. I learned uh, my pastor today said in church that change never happens until you experience pain. And I thought about that. I was like, yeah, that's that's like anything in life. Most of the time people have what? Pain in their chest. And then what do they do? They're like, crap, I got to change what I'm eating. I got to change. I got to get in the freaking gym because I'm like 350, boss. For me, financial pain is depleting. And I just did that with a trailer park down South Louisiana. I depleted literally almost all my cash in that account. That's pain. That's pain now because that's going to make me change and be more into filling that account back up so then I can turn around and keep acquiring these cash flowing businesses. You, you have to consistently do it. It's, it's the people that will invest in these projects and these syndications, you know, they'll do it and three or four years later, they're complaining because they're like, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not anywhere near financially free because no joke, chief, because you're, you're, you're thinking one little investment, one little investment in a 401k, are you, are you financially free? No. The one trait that I've learned, if you want to be successful in anything in life, if you don't remember anything from this video, remember this. What separates the successful people from non-successful people? One word. It's consistency. That's it. Be consistent. You see a jack dude, what is he? He's consistent. He's consistent with his macros. He's consistent in the gym, right? He's working out every day. He's consistent with it. It's not like, hey, this is some fad diet. I'm going to do keto for three months. No, he's consistent with it. The guy that's good in tennis or basketball or whatever, the basketball player, he, that dude's got like a 95% free throw percentage. Guess what? That dude's consistently shoots free throws every day. He's in his driveway. He's at home. He's in the gym, whatever. He's shooting free throws. People that are financially successful, they're consistently saving money and then turning around and investing. They're not doing it once every five years or whatever. You know, people will email me, oh, Jeff, you know, I've been looking in this real estate or whatever for the last two or three years, and I think I'm ready to invest. What happened to the last two or three years? Well, they do. They didn't do anything. How are you going to build wealth if you're not consistently investing in something? You don't want to put it in real estate? That's fine. Put it in something like a money market account or something that's earning you a little bit while you're stalling 
to get into the game. And then once you get in, make it a point to consistently invest whatever it is, 50 grand a year, 100 grand a year, 300 grand a year, whatever, every single year. You do that for about 10 years. If you're a doctor, if you're a dentist, if you make six figures, if you're consistent with it for 10 years, there's no reason why you shouldn't be to the point where work is optional or you shouldn't be to the point where you're almost work is optional. If you do that, I can guarantee you, you will find success. If you don't do that, that's fine, but just get ready to work till you're like 70, 75, and you're going to be staring at the freaking Dow every day going, God, I hope the Dow is up when I get ready to retire. Instead of going, hey, you know what? I'm going to have people in my park that are paying the rent, that are paying for my retirement, and I'm going to give them an, a good, clean place, a safe place to to come to, whatever it is, whether it's a single family home or RV park, mobile home park, whatever, you provide that, then you can provide, you provide a good service and then in, the, in, in return, you'll get a good value. So I hope this got you to thinking a little bit more about how you're approaching your income and taxes. And if you want to learn more about getting started with passive income, do me a favor, download the link, free passive income guide below this video. See you in the next video.